Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Bright Path. And in this week's episode, as we begin to head towards the 2024 elections here in the United States, I want to talk about the potential threat that the elections pose for stability here in the United States. And I want to put this not necessarily in political terms, but I want you to think about this from the standpoint of being a business leader or a resilience leader, like many of you are. What factors should you be thinking about to ensure that you and your company are prepared for potential impacts to your organizations as we work through the remainder of the year into the next presidential inauguration? So I have 10 considerations for you to really think through. The first one is just political uncertainty, that you will want to understand the potential changes in policies and regulations that could arise from different potential election outcomes and be ready for shifts in the regulatory landscape that may affect your industry or profession. The second are economic impacts. You'll want to keep an eye on economic forecasts and scenarios related to election outcomes. Think about how changes in government policies could impact economic stability, interest rates, taxes, inflation, and trade agreements here in our country. Number three is the resilience of your supply chain. Think about assessing the resilience of your supply chain, especially in light of potential political and economic and geopolitical disruption. Think about contingency plans for your key suppliers and logistics. Number four are cybersecurity threats. You will want to continue to be vigilant around potential cybersecurity threats, particularly those that may relate to election security and politically motivated attacks where you can, as you always should, strengthen your cybersecurity measures and conduct regular vulnerability assessments. Number five is social unrest and protests. It's not too early to start planning now for the possibility of social unrest or protests that may occur before, during, or after the elections. Develop crisis communications plans and ensure, and put contingency plans in place to ensure the safety of your employees and your assets. Number six is employee well-being and engagement. Be mindful of the impact the political climate will have on employee morale and engagement in your organization. You will want to continue to foster an inclusive and supportive workplace um, environment and provide resources for your team's mental health and well-being. Number seven are crisis communication strategies. You should review and update your crisis communication strategies to address potential election-related outcomes uh, and disruptions and ensure that you have clear and consistent messaging prepared for your stakeholders, employees, and customers. Number eight is regulatory compliance. Uh, stay informed around potential changes and regulations that might affect your business. Be sure to engage with industry associations or lobbyists, if that's appropriate, to advocate for favorable policies for your organization. Number nine is scenario planning. And I think it's not at all too early to start thinking through what are some scenario planning exercises that you can do to anticipate various election outcomes and the implications for your organization. You should think through flexible strategies to adapt quickly to changing circumstances. And last but not least is number 10, stakeholder engagement. Um, you should continue to engage with key stakeholders inside and outside of your organization, your key customers, your investors, community leaders, law enforcement and intelligence communities to really understand their concerns and expectations and assessments related about the election and maintain open lines of communication to build trust and influence so that you're truly prepared and connected and you have those relationships in place before something happens. We think by proactively assessing uh, and addressing these considerations, business and resilience leaders can better navigate all of the uncertainties that we're feeling related to the 2024 elections and ensure that your organization remains adaptive and resilient. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.